Hello, this is Jeff of Tau Plater Mouse, and we have another set of these glass borosilicate shotgun slugs that we're going to test today. Now these fascinating rounds, and a lot of them are just beautiful, were made by a channel called Sockwood Studios, and if you're interested in seeing how these were made, check it out. Click on the link, and I'll also put a link in the description. Now this time we're changing things up. We have Baron shooting. Um, in the first video, Darren here shot, and a lot of people criticized him and blamed the way he was holding the gun and moving the gun. But you can see right here, these rounds were actually curving through the air because they're, they're made out of glass. They're not very dense, so they really don't have the same inertia that a heavier bullet or projectile would have. So if you watch the video prior to this one where Baron was shooting the computer hard drives, you know that he can shoot. And if you watched a lot of my videos with Darren shooting, you know he can shoot too. Stupid camera. That stupid red camera, I tell you. And when people <laughs> film with me, it's not a very fun, not very quick pace process. And you can see here how long it takes to set up a, a shot. Uh, poor Darren here is anticipating a signal for me to shoot, and his arms are probably getting fatigued. Okay. Super Penetrator versus Giant Gummy Bear Frozen. When you're ready. Now he's shooting a 12 gauge deer slug at this gummy bear, and you'll see that normal rounds tend to fly a little straighter. <laughs> oh, it was ugly. There was chunks of bear <laughs> well let's get started today we'll be shooting at two metal plates and a gas cylinder what they call this thing the Beetlejuice round or something that's the littlest one it's about the size of a deer slug okay whenever you're ready Wow I think that's I think that means it's 10 grams so it's, it's very light. Wow. This one's got a, like a pearl essence to it. It's, nice. little, it's bigger than the last one. Let's see if it stays on target. Good. Yep, ready. Okay, this is number four. Okay, let's see how that does. Don't try to compensate now. Hit it. Don't bring the dust. <laughs> What'd you call that one? The National Geographic one? The National Geographic sized round. <laughs> Shot five. Hit it. God. Let's look at the high-speed footage now and see how these rounds behaved. Each of these rounds were traveling at a very high velocity and pretty much each of them completely disintegrated when they hit the steel plates. This one barely grazed across the top of the cylinder. Now the round did uh, turn about 90 degrees and fly sideways and that's Probably its natural most aerodynamic orientation and like everything it seeks the path of least resistance. One of the frustrating parts of shooting oddball rounds like this is you, you have a natural tendency to want to compensate. Meaning if your first shot is off to the right you, you want to fight that urge to compensate by aiming a little to the left because the rounds are each very unique and they have different flight characteristics. So what you do, you continue aiming at the target instead of trying to guess where the round might go. You'll never guess. And really, we can only blame just the properties of glass. We, you know, it's not the fault of the uh, maker of the slugs. It's not the shooter's fault. Though I guess a lot of people on YouTube want to blame somebody, you know. It's always the shooter's fault, you know. Now in the first video, we kept moving closer and closer to the target. This time we maintained the same distance the whole time. 
approximately 15 to 20 yards. And really that was about the only constant we had. But we put the metal plates there so that the rounds would impact something instead of just flying off into the sand. In the first video, we didn't have very good sunlight and we weren't able to use um, the 1200 frame per second uh, camera speed. This time we set up the camera, try to line up the board to try to see if the rounds were curving, but it wasn't as obvious as in the first video. Now some of these rounds were just a little big, a little bit out of spec, and that was the reason why Baron was kind of shooting in a weird, unorthodox shooting stance. Now this round, you'll notice that there's some broken glass coming out along with the round. It actually broke a little bit as it exited the shotgun. But there was a chunk of glass that was large enough to strike the cylinder finally, so it wasn't a complete loss. To shoot something like this out of a rifled barrel, the round has to be large enough to engage the rifling. It's actually it needs to be oversized, and the results of that would just be catastrophic. The glass is too hard, the round would lodge in the barrel, and the gun would blow up. And then finally we have this kind of bullet-shaped two-inch long round, and really at first glance it appears that it worked perfectly. But just like the round before it, we had a lot of broken glass. The, the round shattered as it exited, yet we still had a large enough chunk hit the canister. I guess it's easier to try to blame the shooter than to try to understand physics. And probably the best explanation is the difference between throwing a golf ball and throwing a ping pong ball. Which one will fly straighter and farther? So there's definitely a good reason why bullets are made out of dense, heavy materials. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.